say hello strats with you? Hello, хорошо. Today I'd like to speak about Shostakovich's Concerto Number no. 1 for cello and orchestra. To begin with, let me quote Vengerov, who said that without understanding the underlying reality of Shostakovich's life, we cannot fully understand how to approach this work with the right attitude. Read about Shostakovich's life. You can watch a video if that's easier for you and just understand the background. I will say a few words. Stalin purged his political enemies and Shostakovich's own family was uh, affected. Close relatives were sent to Siberia. His sister, his mother-in-law, they were all affected. In 1936, Stalin attended Shostakovich's opera Lady Macbeth of the Metsenk district and stormed out of the hall with his entourage. Uh, two days later, the infamous article Chaos Instead of Music appeared in the Pravda, the official newspaper of the Soviet Union. And here's a quote from that article. The listener is flabbergasted by the deliberately dissonant muddled stream of sounds. To follow this music is, this music is difficult. To remember it is impossible. This article ended with a direct threat. This is a game that might end very badly. The article was unsigned, indicating that it expressed an official opinion that had no chance of being contested, and it set a new standard for political control of the arts. Uh, Soviet artists who found themselves under official censure were labeled as formalists, and this word means an overly academic style, uh, in the Soviet Union, the term was used against those whose music was difficult to understand and was influenced by the West and therefore decadent and not in the spirit of socialism. Other composers that were affected were Prokofiev and Khachaturian. Uh, there's others, of course, but those are the most famous composers that we know. Soviet artists were supposed to present the slogan, life is better, life is happier. But Shostakovich's music neglected to present, obviously, this uh, rose-colored image. It was suggested that the reason that the opera received this criticism was because it was bleak. Now let's talk about our concerto. In 1959, Shostakovich was interviewed for a newspaper article, and he described the first movement uh, of his concerto as a uh, jovial march. But he was not more specific than that. He was saying that the form and expression change throughout the composition process. Uh, the irony of using uh, what is essentially a funeral march, and I will talk about this in a second, uh, as the source for this jovial march must have been obvious to him, to Shostakovich. A lot of Shostakovich's music can be related to the concept of forced rejoicing. Uh, we can see a perfect example of this at the end of his very famous Fifth Symphony, triumphant or oppressed. There are different ways of interpreting this ending, but uh, certainly here, when there is humor, you're gonna see that it's uh, a dark humor, it's sarcastic humor, biting, uh, and not a happy-go-lucky humor. In preparation for writing this concerto, Shostakovich studied uh, all the major concertos, and he actually modeled this after the Sinsans in terms of just general form, so, fast first movement, second slow movement. He added the cadenza, of course, and the, the last movement is fast again. Uh, but mainly uh, orchestration-wise, it is very light, so that we are really not feeling covered at any point. This is written wonderfully well for us. Shostakovich also took inspiration from Prokofiev's Symphony Concertante. He used to listen to the record again and again until it was warped. A parallel is the pairing of the celesta and the cello. Let's listen. Another important influence for this concerto is Mahler, and Shostakovich admired Mahler. And there are a few works by Mahler that are quoted in the concerto, which I'll talk about in a second. There's also the element of incongruous styles, combining serious 
uh, emotionally painful music with flippant material not associated with high art, so folk tunes uh, that are simple. Mahler uses that too, of course, in his works, uh, bird calls, military marches, incorporating everyday life into his work. To quote another writer, I thought that was interesting, that Darry Cook observed that for Mahler, um, there is no more effective way of highlighting tragedy than to bring the trivial and ribald into grotesque opposition with it. Perhaps Shostakovich does the same. Much is written about the opening quote uh, of his eighth quartet. This is his signature, let's see, and our opening theme is derived from that DSCH theme. DSCH is the German spelling of Dmitri Shostakovich's initials and uh, translated into musical pitches. So D is for Dimitri, D. S, Shostakovich, is for E flat. C is for C, and H is for B natural. So Shostakovich's autobiographical eighth string quartet uh, starts with that uh, DSCH quote in a different key. Let's listen. Although the cello concerto doesn't include this motif in its basic form, we can hear this motif uh, again and again in the concerto. Uh, except for the second movement, every movement in the cello concerto has that theme. Coming back to quartet number eight, if you listen to the third movement, there is an exact quote of this beginning of our concerto. <laughs> So as I said, the opening motif of the cello concerto is very, very important because we hear it come back again and again throughout the concerto. We can hear it clearly in a score to the 1948 film, which he obviously wrote before the, he wrote the cello concerto. The film is called The Young Guard. The part where we can hear the theme is titled Death of Heroes. Here we see the bravery of a young group of uh, Soviet citizens during the German invasion of World War II. Let's see. Рассказывать это все людям, которые в сущности уже мертвецы. that the theme here is much slower and harmonized differently than in the concerto, but the motif is the same. When the cello comes in, the harmony is ambiguous and the writing chromatic. The orchestra comes in with a rhythmic motif that we will hear also throughout the movement. <laughs> We don't know which key we are in, but uh, the B flat is the dominant of E flat major, which is our key. One way of thinking of this concerto is using a metaphor where the soloist is a citizen struggling against the state, not unlike what Shostakovich suffered against the Soviet government. One more interesting anecdote about this is when asked about the concerto, Shostakovich just uh, said, oh, I just took a simple tiny theme and tried to develop it. Of course, uh, we have a masterpiece. So we're starting in E flat major in bar 82, we're in C minor. In the classical period, sonata form modulation moves from a minor key to the relative major key. Here Shostakovich reverses that. He goes from a major key, which is E flat major, to its relative minor C. In bar 86, we have the second theme, which reminds us of a song by Mussorgsky titled Trepak or Tripak. The song was orchestrated by Shostakovich and is part of a song cycle. Uh, the song cycle is called Songs and Dances of Death. Here, and in the fourth movement, we have a dance macabre. <laughs> The 
The song Trepak by Mussorgsky is about a drunken peasant who stumbles outside in the snow and becomes caught in a blizzard. The figure of death invites him to dance a folk dance called Trepak. As he freezes to death, he dreams of summer fields and doves. <laughs> Bar 36 sounds a little bit like the trepak melody, like... Mm. You can also lift your bow here. Uh, make it clear when the three, two bars start and this be sure you're playing on the string a lot of this is really uh, glued to the string in my opinion bar 82 starts a C minor section we should give our trills to the orchestra and then there's a, a big bang timpani bang right there so uh... In general, it's really great to keep the orchestra part in your head. So even when you play... Always think of the that figure, very important figure that keeps coming back again and again throughout the concerto. In general, when we go between 2-2 two, two and 3-2, two, I just like to imagine really a conductor be very clear on when it's two two and it's three two just so that you feel where the heaviness of the beat falls as you can hear this uh, and also here these are all derived from the tripak uh, theme so uh, keeps coming back here. In this particular place, listen to the clarinets. Uh, you should study the score, of course. I like playing sort of a hairpin bars uh, 127 to 128, for example. So it's a uh, crescendo towards 128 and then going back from 128. And then again. And you are also giving your line to the orchestra. So don't slow down there. In bar 141, again, play kind of glued to the string. We have another chord of the first theme. So that's a, that's a of course, uh, and we have that theme again. I'll show you a couple of places. We have in bar uh, 178. And so. One fifty seven I would use less bone. Notice that this theme always starts on the second beat of the bar. When you have double stops, just practice them separately. And practice them separately for clarity. And And for intonation. You can use a lot of bow there. Bar 203 is a nod to serialism, uh, which Shostakovich was obviously aware of, very much aware of, and studying. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for adjectives to describe Shostakovich's language and raw is one of the words that came to my mind. There's opportunities to play uh, open A string, for example, close to the bridge, 
In this first movement, the woodwinds are most responsible for the tone color, giving it a dry neoclassical style. Shostakovich emphasizes extremes in register with the rumble of the contrabassoon and the shrillness of the piccolo giving a sinister, even darkly comical intensity to this movement. <laughs> The strings don't enter until bar 40, I believe. And then when they do, or 44, and when they do, they imitate the winds uh, with a seco, the dry playing. Uh, this is in contrast to the second movement, which is lush, lyrical. Another quote of that theme is... <laughs> Here we have the DSCH theme. So part of the DSCH theme. And of course, be aware of the horn player. This is almost a double concerto for horn and cello. The horn has a huge part. Don't rush, for example, here. Let the horn play their melody. In bar 281, we imitate the horn melody that we just heard. Bar 296, we have an echo of the first theme. It's a march. This keep it very, very steady. Uh, we are with the winds. Technically speaking, the passage uh, in 178 is probably the hardest. Just practice it with dotted rhythm. And then reverse that. And then also you can break it into smaller pieces. So, um, and then one bar at a time. So notice the hard parts are the shifts. So if you want to isolate the problem, for example, this is a difficult shift. Your left hand should always be ahead of the right hand. So you're almost going to reach the G sharp before playing up bow. In other words, you're moving your hand on the old bow, on the C-sharp. You can steal a little time from the C-sharp to get to the G-sharp on time. 